CVA, and we start with this quote from the Bank for International Settlements, saying that during the financial crisis, roughly two-thirds of losses attributed to counterparty credit risk were due to CVA losses, and only about one-third were due to actual defaults. So most of the losses associated with the financial crisis were not actually losses because of defaults, but were losses associated with changes in the price, the mark-to-market of financial instruments. That is because if you do consider the risk of default of the counterparty, the price of a financial instrument might change significantly. If you are pricing an interest rate swap, even a plain vanilla interest rate swap with some counterparty, and you're not considering credit risk, you'll get the risk-free, the credit risk-free price. Okay, no counterparty credit risk, you get one price. But if that counterparty has had problems during the crisis, for example, and its credit risk, its credit quality has decreased, the price of this instrument, of this swap, the mark-to-market is going to change. It's going to change significantly. And the changes in the mark-to-market that we see with the, of this interest rate swap with that counterparty could be significant. And indeed, as the BIS says, they were significant, more significant than actual defaults. So this correction that we should make for the price of financial instruments in order to take into account counterparty credit risk is critical, is crucial. So counterparty credit risk is, has emerged indeed as one of the most important factors driving financial markets and contributing to the global financial crisis. Indeed, it is now a standard practice to compute the counterparty credit risk via the CBA for financial instruments to take a into account this quantitatively. So counterparty risk is by definition the risk taken on by an entity enter, entering an over-the-counter contract with one or more counterparties. This is what we enter when we are facing counterparty credit risk. It's a risk that we have always faced, but until now, we have not considered explicitly. Now, after the crisis, we are attempting to try to quantify it. We are asked by the regulators to compute it. And the financial markets in general, trading desks of all the large banks in the world, compute it so that we have a fair price of the instrument, but considering the risk of default of the counterparty. We have, of course, the issue of central clearinghouses that if we do so, we uh, might not might be mitigated. We might not need to compute the CVA explicitly. but. Nevertheless, the over-the-counter markets are still huge, and therefore we need to compute it, and is computed all the time for all new transactions. So the credit valuation adjustment, the CVA, is uh, defined as the difference between the risk-free portfolio value and the portfolio value that takes into account the possibility of the counterparty default. So in some sense, it can be considered a market value of counterparty credit risk, and uh, the usual formula that you could find is something like this, where you have the price of the financial instrument and you have the CVA that is taken away from the price of the instrument if you considered it risk-free. So this will be the uh, price of the instrument risk-free. This will be the CVA. And this will be the price of the instrument when we have counterparty credit risk. It seems very simple. It seems as a simple subtraction, just a correction. The problem is that when we have to compute it, we have to look into the future. And to look into the future means to use models, means to use simulation. And indeed, the calculation of CBA is highly dependent on Monte Carlo simulation. It requires Monte Carlo simulation. That is because the fault happens in the future. And we need to price financial instruments into the future in order to determine what will be the impact if the counterparty of that specific instrument defaults at some future date, and what will be the impact on the price of the instrument at that time. So computing the CVA, therefore, requires simulation, requires looking into the future to determine the price of the instrument. So <coughs> the formula is uh, indeed like this, this correction that we have to do on the price of the instrument. And uh, 
we are going to look at the concept of CBA in terms of these three big blocks. The first is that of credit, that which involves uh, the risk of default. Then of valuation, that is related to the value or, or the price of the instrument as a function of time. And then the adjustment, uh, that is the value that we need to give that will correct the price of the instrument when considering counterparty credit risk.